I'm really sorry up front, I'm kind of sick, so I will be coughing and uh, I think my nose, apologies for that. Um, so yes, today I'm going to uh, uh, do a workshop about modernizing the legacy. Um, it's going to be uh, based on a quite simple application I have created for, for the purpose of this uh, training. Uh, I'm going to focus on reusing existing Symfony components to, uh, to empower your, your legacy applications. So hopefully uh, you, you'll take away something from that. Uh, a few words about me. Uh, I work for Sensio Labs UK. Uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter under Supermark handle. If you, if you have questions afterwards or you want to ask anything in the future, uh, then feel free to do it on Twitter. Um, the agenda for today is, uh, is uh, very simple. We have uh, four tasks to go through. I don't think we're going to... I don't know if we, if we manage to, 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 to get to task number four, but that can be your homework, if you wish. Um, so I'm, I'm going to focus uh, on two, three things. Uh, first one is going to be adding dependency injection to your projects. Uh, second, migrating to tweak templates. Um, and then building your own controllers. And having those three things, you can easily, um, uh, you can easily migrate to Symfony Framework, if you wish. So before we start, can we make sure that we have uh, VM uh, working, up and running? Uh, if you... If you go inside Vagrant and run those commands, you should get the latest version of the, uh, uh, of the repository I created for you guys. And uh, you have to run those two commands, unfortunately, to make the VM working. Yeah. yeah. After you run it, you should see in a browser something like that. Should I go back to the previous slide? Um, I'm a plane spotter photographer, hence the planes in, in here. Uh, so let's say, assume that I built this little application some time ago to try to sell my uh, pictures. Um, probably no one would buy them, but that's the other story. So this is a really simple application uh, which allows users to, uh, to view pictures and buy them if they want. There is one, uh, let me go to the browser. So uh, it operates easily. You can view details of the picture, add to basket, go to basket, continue to check out, give your details, uh, and someone will, will send it to you. So right now, the problem with this application is that uh, it's a legacy one, and we're going to fix it to make it more modern. OK. So, but for most people, uh, the bigger problem is that usually they don't know the code because someone else wrote it, uh, or it's your old code, you wrote it a long time ago, and you just don't remember what's, what was happening there. It probably was an old framework you, you, you don't know, never used, or an application was built over years by different uh, developers who were just adding stuff by themselves, or uh, they were uh, everybody was doing... Uh, whatever they wanted in the code, and it's just like a mess, spaghetti. Uh, it's usually an old code, which is most of the time procedural. There's no uh, objects or no uh, object-oriented programming principles used. No namespaces used, probably. No code convention to followed by, uh, by the group, uh, by the people who were working on it. And there is no separation of concerns, so everything is mixed. 
Uh, you, you probably have PHP mixed with HTML, CSS, you overusing global variables, and the code is probably in public repository, uh, public folder, and its collection of ink files. So anyone could potentially hack it easily. There's also no unit on functional tests, uh, no concept of like environments. Uh, these days, we, you probably have uh, different settings for your dev environment, your staging, your uh, your uh, production, and you use uh, some automated tools, uh, automating tools to to build it to, uh, to to different environments, like staging using Capistrano, Capifone. Uh, you have no error reporting, no logging, so it's very difficult to understand the logic behind the code. Uh, it's difficult to add new features. Uh, you, 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 you wonder how, how to fit your item into the mess. Uh, debugging bugs or fixing bugs, like the couple of we had just now, it's difficult because nothing is displayed. Um, yeah, and it's really difficult to adopt new technologies which you would like, to, everybody is talking about, and you would like to use. So, um, Going back to our website, <coughs> let's say the product owner of this website hasn't done anything for a couple of years, but with the uh, new requirements and to be competitive with uh, uh, other people on the market, uh, he would like to change one thing on the, uh, on the uh, website, which is to introduce a postage calculator, which would tell customers how much they're going to pay for postage. Well, a few years back, it was okay to sell customers, oh, we'll call you back and we'll tell you how much it costs. These days, everybody wants to have a, a postage price displayed on a, on, a, on a website. So, yeah, basically, instead of this message, we want to, uh, we want to uh, add a, a postage. So, uh, someone wrote a new postage calculator, let's say it was uh, one of us. I don't want you to write it, uh, it's already written by me. Uh, this new postage uh, calculator is a new feature to the, to the system. It's written using PHP spec, so using the full TDD cycle. So test first, then, uh, uh, then code. It's also decoupled, so you should be able to reuse it with uh, any code, including legacy code. So it should be easy to implement. But before we, oh yeah, how it works. So this is the uh, simple postage uh, calculator. Uh, I'll go line, one line by line on over the code. So as a constructor, for the constructor, it, get, it takes postage repository, which uh, is some kind of persistent storage, let's say SQL, or uh, in our example, it's a SQLite. Um, and then uh, it basically calculates uh, items for basket, uh, where it first of all checks how many items in the basket uh, it has, and tries to find, uh, if there is zero, it returns empty postage, uh, which is zero, or finds from a database. Customer wanted to be able to write in a database, uh, to be able to change in a database uh, the postage over time. So let's say do he want to make it lower or higher. So, and the, the, uh, it works on the principle that it displays uh, different post postage po for different number of items. So postage repository in our case is just an interface, um, which uh, is, yeah, we just hidden here. So, uh, and that is implemented in SQLite repository. Um, so this is basically um, trying to invert uh, uh, dependency in here. Uh, so I'll, I'll get back to that later. Um, so our post, post, postage SQLite repository implements repository interface. Um, in a constructor, we just instantiate uh, SQLite database. Uh, if you wanted to use different uh, database or if you wanted to use different uh, 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 way of conne connecting to the database, let's say doctrine, you would probably in the constructor get uh, Doctrine uh, Entity Manager or something like that and store it locally. And this is our implementation of the method, which uh, returns a postage 
uh, uh, object. So this is using a principle of dependence inversion. Our postage calculator uh, relies uh, on postage repository, which is an interface, and this can be implemented by uh, by postage uh, SQLite repository or Doctrine. It's a clean way of decoupling uh, application from infrastructure. Uh, so it, your postage calculator doesn't really depend on any particular implementation. You can replace this uh, uh, postage repository with whatever you want. And this is where uh, dependency injection comes handy because uh, using dependency injection we can define what we, uh, what we want to use in here. So, uh, yeah, check out uh, a new branch in your, in your code, feature postage calculator. And run composer install. Composer install is required because it, uh, uh, with this new change we introduced in the code base, um, we introduced in the code base uh, uh, composer as well, which uh, uh, installs some uh, dependencies, including PHP spec, which we use for testing. Yeah, yeah that's what I want. So you can, if you, after you run PHP uh, Composer install, you can run PHP spec uh, to see uh, uh, that it's uh, the, the code we added is, test, uh, is tested with PHP spec and it's nicely described what it does. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, PHP spec is a tool which helps you to design your code. It's a design tool for your code, which uh, gives you a side effect with uh, uh, test unit tests and. Uh, a nice documentation for your code. So if you look something like that, uh, every line is a um, is a documentation of what your application does on the code level, um, and uh, it basically gives you a result of the test because each line with the tick means that uh, it's uh, it's a passing spec. It's um, it's similar to PHP unit uh, in terms. Though PHP unit has a wider range of uses, you can use PHP unit for uh, uh, for, uni for unit tests as in here, but you can also use it for integration tests or for functional tests. PHP spec is only de defined, designed to, to use with, uh, with at the code level. I've seen some people trying to uh, mock databases and run uh, tests with real databases in PHP spec. That's the wrong use of. It's not a tool for integration tests. Bihat is uh, similar. It's more, uh, it's testing on the story level. You can also use Bihat to um, uh, to run it on a code level. Uh, I think uh, Pavel, who's sitting at the back, is going to have a, a talk tomorrow on Friday about that, modeling by example. So that's uh, that's the main difference. I kind of prefer PHP spec because it's 
it's easier to write specification before your code. With PHP, uni with PHP unit, you have too much additional code you have to write uh, to actually have something tested. If you look at the code, um, there is a folder called specs, and everything uh, is spec in here. So where's our postage calcula calculator? So everything is in, the, in your code base. You can have a look and, and see how it looks like. OK. So t task one is we're going to add uh, dependency injection to, uh, to, to the application. I'm going to, I'm going to go through the task, uh, through the old steps which are required. And then you will try to, by yourself, uh, 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 do it within your application. So be with me for a second. Uh, so before we start, please run those commands. Uh, it's gonna, if you have any progress, save it, uh, and then run git checkout dash b local slash task one. Uh, oh, sorry. <coughs> yeah, so basically before we start, uh, I will have always those, t those uh, commands on the screen. So if you have any unfinished work, you can save it, uh, and then run git checkout uh, to create your own branch, uh, local branch, uh, from the previous branch, which is the base. <coughs> How is it going? If, you, if you're running it inside con uh, Vagrant, it has autocomplete. So for the existing branch, you can just type feature and should autocomplete. Okay, re ready? So first, first thing we have to do is to install dependency injection. And a composer is an awesome tool to automate uh, requirements for, your, for, for packages. Um, so you just need to run those two uh, commands. It will install dependency injection uh, uh, component and a Symfony configuration component, which we use to uh, define uh, our services. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a container. Um, and uh, this is gonna, going to sit in our existing code base next in a underscore ink folder uh, where other, uh, where other uh, included uh, modules, existing modules uh, exist. So our code doesn't use namespaces, but it doesn't stop us using namespaces from uh, other code because we're using now um, uh, uh, stuff loaded uh, composer to define dependencies. Composer provides us with uh, unified autoloader, which is very handy. So we need to, to require that. So this way we can build container, uh, new container, which will load configuration from uh, from the services.xml file. And as we're gonna in include this file in our code container compile should, uh, container uh, variable will basically uh, have our container in a global context available for, for everything, at least for now. So our services XML, uh, it's gonna be for start very simple. Uh, we're going to have two services in it only. First is our postage repository. Uh, services we define as, a, I'm using XML in here uh, but you can use also YAML files to, to define uh, services uh, for dependency injection. Uh, so first, first service is uh, Postage Repository, uh, which is implemented by SQLite Repository and our Postage Calculator, which as you remember takes the repository interface, but in our case it takes one argument service, Postage Repository implemented by Postage SQLite Repository. 
So we're going to add it. Uh, let me go back to the browser. Uh, we're going to, on our basket page, we're going to add a line which tells how much it's going to cost to send those items. So on our basket page, you will need to add this container after the database is loaded. Uh, and then basically we take postage calculator from the container. It's a registered service, so we can get it by name. Uh, and a simple, uh, if you look at the code base, you're going to see the basket is saved in a session in a very simple form. It uh, basically has a key uh, value pairs where the key is a um, when the key is uh, uh, ID of the post postcard and the value is the quantity of of this, of this particular postcard. So it will try to find the postage for uh, uh, for the basket, and if the basket if the postage is found, then it's gonna render it to view and just display information. Estimated postage for number of items um, is gonna. Uh, be something. Yeah, so let's start. <coughs> okay. Should we have this one? Yes. Can you guys see it well? Yeah. Uh, for this one or for the next? For this one. Mm. I can try to make it. Bigger, maybe. Yes, your project only has required components installed, so, and there is no Symfony stack in it, so you should be able to just auto-complete it on in any ID use, using.
Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, there's XML file for um, I'm going to post on, po post on uh, GIST. So it's going to be easier for you guys to to copy it. Uh, can I name the GIST? So the XML is under this URL if you want to copy it. Find the place where uh, you want to put the postage kind of calculator. Make sure you include container PHP. <coughs> yeah, basket is in a public folder. Um, uh, basket. Say again. Sorry, I can't hear you. Here you are taking the data directly from the session into the calculator. Yeah. Are you using PDO or for escaping this into the SQL? Right now, it's not using any escaping, or it's a legacy application. You can see in the code it's not escaped. So one thing to, to say is the postage calcula calculator returns an object uh, of the postage, and that postage uh, has a method to view, which basically returns an array representation, which is useful in a template. Right, so let check out. So, as a result, on your page, you should have a postage and pack, packing uh, displayed. I added, I've added to the uh, table, but you probably have it as a text in the, as, as it was in my example. So this is uh, maybe not so clever, but uh, useful technique of injecting basically full stack of the decoupled code into your legacy application. Uh, if, if you can even use that with uh, Drupal, Drupal 7, which has no, which doesn't use components, uh, Symfony components. You could still write some parts of your module or application and inject them this way to to your to, to 
uh, to your Drupal modules. So everybody got posted displayed. You can add more products to the basket. And the postage should should go up. <laughs> um, yep, yeah. I'll use the same gist. Okay, I've added to the same gist the missing uh, postage SQLite repository class. So if you just copy, your dependence injection should start work. If you struggle, you can just uh, check out your this branch, and you'll have working dependency injection. You may wish to commit your changes to your local branch. Uh, add. Oh yeah, it can be this. Okay, I think I'm gonna carry on. Um, if you check out, uh, run this method to check out uh, for your second task, uh, create a local branch for your second task, you should basically have something like that displayed on your page. <coughs> Our second task is about adding twig. Uh, Twig is a, it's not a Symfony component, it's, uh, but it's built by guys from Sensio, uh, from uh, Sensio, yeah. Uh, Twig uh, is yet another templating engine, but it's uh, really powerful. What I like about Twig is that it allows you to separate uh, the view from the code, so you, you, do, you don't really have to um, mix your HTML with PHP. It allows you to add some logic in a, in a template as well. So it's not a basic templating engine. And you can render pieces of page or the whole, uh, whole pages with it. Uh, in, in our example, um, I'm going to add a twig to basically render this uh, basket. Why? Because um, I also have it on the checkout page. Right now, code is duplicated, and I would like to have one, uh, one, one piece of code which covers both, uh, both pages. Uh, okay, so 
to, to install Twig, um, you need to run method composer require twig slash twig uh, tilde dot one zero. Sorry. <coughs> to install Twig, you have to uh, install this composer require method. Run. Sorry. And Twig is very simple to use. Uh, first of all, you have to instantiate Twig loader uh, uh, module, which will, which you point to templates. Uh, well, you basically pass the path where the templates are going to be stored in your application, and then you instantiate Twig, uh, which takes loader as a dependency, and then you can render uh, templates into uh, with a uh, set of data. So first argument is a template name, second argument is uh, array of, of data. And that's what we're going to do in this example. So to enable Twig in your DI container, uh, I'll probably update GIST again. Uh, we're going <coughs> to we're gonna add uh, a list of a collection of uh, paths we, we have just one path, but you could have more. And as a next step, we create template loader uh, service, which we inject into the Twig service. I'm going to copy it into GIST, so it's going to be easier for you. Render this block uh, so we can reuse it on two uh, pages, basket and checkout page. Um, I wanted you guys to write a basket view service uh, which would be uh, registered with the I container and which we could uh, use to get uh, basically basket view data uh, which would be passed to the template and rendered. But um, looking at the time, I prob we probably won't have time to, to, to build it. So, um, uh, so I can either post it to you, uh, to you as GIST, or you can, you can uh, check out uh, the later, later version, um, uh, new local branch, and then you see in the code how, how that was built. So I think that's quicker. We have 10 minutes left, and I wanted to go for one more exercise. <coughs> I think we'll... What uh, what time do we, what time do we finish? Break. Oh yeah, so we have, oh yeah, okay. So we have 25 minutes, oh sorry. Right. Okay, so you've write your controller then.
transit. So if you look again at my gist, you see I pasted, pasted the basket view uh, service. <coughs> which, yeah, which takes uh, two dependencies. It takes postage calculator and uh, postcard repository. And then it goes through items in a basket and calculates some and builds the view, uh, which then is going to be returned. So inside our uh, basket.index.php, we can simply <coughs> use it to render the uh, template. And I'll add the template as well. Yep, so we have a template in GIST as well, which we render <coughs> the basket view. So if you want to do it yourself, you can basically do it or just check out the next branch. Right, so let me do it on my git checkout feature. No. Uh, task. Here we go. This bit is now rendered by Twig from the separate uh, template. before you start migrating your whole stack of templates into, into Twig. So it's a pretty cool way to get used to new, uh, new toy before you, you do a full uh, migration. Okay, let's carry on. Our next step is we're gonna try to build a, a separate controller. Um, and that's, um, before we started, I would like to introduce how uh, controllers work in uh, in Symfony. Uh, they basically take the request and output a response. Uh, and what happens in controller? Uh, it's just um, some actions happens in controller. Gather the data, execute a command, or execute some uh, services. <coughs> so 
uh, the response is produced and probably template is being rendered and it's outputted as a response object. So Symfony, uh, to use that, uh, is using uh, Symfony HTTP, HT, HTTP foundation uh, uh, component, uh, which we can require install in easily uh, from the command line. It, using request object and response objects also allows us to uh, simply uh, decouple from uh, from the global state, because you no longer require uh, get variables or post variables. You just work with one simple request object. <coughs> right. So, yeah. What our task is going to be is we have a uh, we have a view which displays uh, product information uh, which is postcard in our in our scenario. Uh, we want to add a new uh, public slash postcard slash index PHP a new controller for that uh, which is that simple. <coughs> it's uh, it's going to request uh, build request from globals, pass request to the uh, container, uh, sorry to the uh, controller, and it's going to send it. Uh, it's going to receive response and send the response. So response object when you run method send will execute will basically output uh, HTML and kill the browser. So. As a part of this exercise, I wanted you to write uh, uh, the, the, the controller. Uh, I don't, yeah. But I don't think we'll, we'll have time to do it yourselves. Do you want to try? OK, so this is, this is the uh, postcard slash index PHP, which uh, just copy. And you have to create your own controller and register it with, with dependency injection.
Okay, I'll go with you <coughs> through. Um, we have around 12 minutes left, so I'll show you the uh, solution I've written by myself. So basically, <coughs> uh, our I've created a postcard view controller, which I actually spec as well with PHP spec. So let's go to PHP spec uh, file first. Um, so I've, I've wrote a simple test. Um, I wanted to uh, get a response from it. Uh, yeah, you can you can check it later because it's not going to be readable in here. I see. Maybe I show you in here GitHub. My. So m I have just one spec specification here. It uh, it mocks. Uh, oh, maybe I skip it. Okay, let's go here. So my my post postcard view controller basically takes two two dependencies. It takes postcard repository to find the right uh, postcard I want to display. <coughs> and it takes Twig Renderer, which is the rendering engine uh, we're using to render output. So this is set to the private repositories, uh, private uh, variables. Now, our action receives request. From looking at the request object, I know that the query parameters should be uh, uh, are stored in a parameters bag, which is a, uh, which is called query, and I can get it by name. So this is how I get ID. Then, from the postcard repository, I find uh, a current postcard, which is needs to be displayed by ID. <coughs> then view is basically rendering a template postcard view uh, with postcard as a uh, as a data bug to, to for the template. And I'm creating a response, which uh, first of all includes content, status, HTTP OK, and the content type. Those two are optional, but it's nice to specify them. Now, if we look at the template, <coughs> this is view, postcard. View. Uh, so the template is uh, very simple. I actually created another template called layout. Uh, so my uh, my page template uh, is very simple. Uh, if I run it, um, yeah, it displays exactly the same as it used to. And my layout. Uh, template it's, uh, has a wrapper, so I don't have to repeat it in every single, single template. If you read more 10 minutes, okay. Uh, if, I read, uh, if you read more about templating engine, a uh, tweak, you, you learn how to reuse the same templates and uh, basically create a layout which you can extend uh, with, uh, uh, with your page uh, views. Uh, we, we also had to introduce postcard uh, repository in SQLite, which is again very simple. It creates uh, oh, SQLite uh, database, but as I'm saying, you could inject here Doctrine uh, Entity Manager and store it in a, a locally, so you could use it to, to find items from, uh, from, from there. Yeah, and this is simple query and returns postcard from 
uh, from the result. So once we have <coughs> controllers like that um, decoupled from uh, separate controllers, you can actually start moving to Symfony because you can, you can simply uh, take your controller and uh, use an even simplify it more and use annotations which are provided by your, your, your framework. To, to set up routing, um, allowed methods, um, tell that it's going to use template, um, uh, it's going to return data for template, and it will <coughs> and will basically render output to the particular template. It also assumes that you're using a param converter. Uh, by default, Symfony uses doctrine param converter, but, um, uh, but you could use uh, your own custom build if you're using some other uh, databases or you want to do some, some extra logic. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't think I would get there. Uh, I don't have this application moved to Symfony. Um, uh, that would be your homework if you, if you wish uh, to continue with this ex exercise. Uh, so, yeah. Basically, that's it. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, this application has uh, many entry points, and in the past, that used to be a case that you would have applications in many uh, and ma many entry point entry points uh, symphony has one single front controller and then uses uh, root matching and uh, uh, model writing uh, to match it to particular controllers so that that would be next step but if you uh, yeah you can you can basically uh, start using symphony you can start building your micro framework because the next step would be to add a kernel simple kernel probably routing uh, uh, module which would match routes and then dispatch it to the particular controllers. Yeah, there's tons. More questions? Um, there is another approach. You can basically uh, use model write to have two applications under the same URL. And let's say under alias, you could namespace the new, new code base. And you could basically start with writing chunks of the code application or views uh, into, with a new framework. Uh, or you could use this technique by injecting dependency injection to your existing one and basically migrating bits by bits. Um, it all depends on application, how complex and how how difficult it is to would it be to uh, to migrate that particular application. More questions? Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, It depends. Yes, if you have a simple. Um, is it worth starting? It all depends on application, really. If you have something smaller, <coughs> something smaller, or less complex, that probably would be easy to just copy code and just build it on on top of uh, Symfony. But you could basically start using Symfony front-end and try to cover new stuff with a Symfony front-end and if it falls, if it, uh, if, if particular route is not covered by Symfony, <coughs> you could revert back to, 
the legacy application. That's another approach. So it's, it's not, I mean, my examples, uh, it's, it's not the only way to, to go forward. It's, uh, I've done something similar for uh, Drupal applications, where I wanted to introduce decoupled code inside Drupal 7, which is completely um, not object orientated and doesn't have a concept of uh, dependency injection. And this is the technique we used. We basically created a container, which we injected into the global state, and then accessed that to access services which were providing data for us. And that was a pretty neat and quick way to work around the complex structure and, uh, of, uh, of Drupal. More questions? No questions. OK, guys, if you have more questions, please come see me afterwards. I will be around. Thank you very much. And sorry for my voice. <laughs>